In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good people, it is Friday, the 18th day of February, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2022. I want first to start with a question that somebody was asking yesterday. Um, when is the next novena? <laughs> the next novena is coming. And I'll be able to communicate when it is coming. And uh, undoubtedly, the novena is about our children, school-going children, especially those who are doing exams, national exams and international exams. Having said that, uh, somebody else wanted to, to know more about generational blessings and especially in terms of uh, supporting the church. I know there is where you worship. How about, how about talking to your priest or to your pastor and maybe asking their needs? There is how you are gifted and how somebody else is gifted. We are all gifted differently. Maybe what you can do, another person cannot. With, depending on what you have and what you can do, Maybe there is something, there is always, I believe that there is always something that each one of us can do uh, for proclamation of the word of God. Supporting the ministry is diverse. There are some of you who are endowed enough financially that you can even buy vehicles to your churches. You can help in building uh, your pastors or priests' houses. You can do all that. So, I may not be able to be so certain or con uh, uh, concrete in what you can do, but you can talk to your local priest, you can talk to your local pastor, uh, and then ask them, Pastor, uh, in the work of evangelization in this parish, is there an area you think I can, I can help? Maybe he'll tell you, we are stuck here or we are stuck here. You can go to your priest and ask your priest, uh, Father, how can I be able to support uh, the work of evangelization? And I'm sure he'll be able to guide you. So I, I think that is, that is, that is answered. Uh, picking from yesterday, God expects you to be faithful servants. Faithful servants in all fronts. Um, to others, and especially one writer says that uh, you need to be women, women who can wash other people's feet. Uh, the expectation that, that God has for you as a woman is you are a servant. Remember, a servant is not a slave. I know some of you ha have been enslaved by the types of marriages and relationships that you entered into. Some of you have been enslaved by the cultures. Some cultures has, has um, practices that are very retrogressive and some that are like directly anti-women. Therefore, gracious ladies, as we say, God ex expects you to be a servant. And as I, I want to say it again, a servant is not a slave. A slave is made so by somebody for their own utility motives. But as a servant, as a servant, you are a higher person in terms of glorifying God by whatever it is that you do. Dear ladies, our gracious women out there, God expects you to guard your heart. There is nobody else who can guard your heart the way you can. It is yours. And it is, it is you to know to who and how to expose your heart because it can be misused it can be broken. I'm sure you have heard people say, you know, my heart is so broken. Your heart is broken. Yes, it is. And somebody may have taken advantage of you. He expects you to have the mind of Christ. Read Romans 15, 5. Gracious ladies, God expects you to have the mind of Christ. What are the things that... Um, would show or would be, the expect would be expected of you to have the mind of Christ. One is to be selfless. It's not about you. It's about him who called you. That is the mind of Christ. 
a unifier that you are the reason why people come together and reconcile. That is the mind of Christ. That our souls may be won for him. That is a mind of Christ. And he expects you to have exactly that. He expects you to be a servant to the truth. Uh-huh. Proverbs 16, 13. That you are judiciously truthful. Religiously truthful. That you are a missionary of truth. Standing for that which is true and clean. That is exact, exactly what God expects you to be. I once read a text, and the writer was talking about um, women who are beautiful. And the, the writer said that uh, beautiful women are truthful. And the writer was talking about the beauty that cannot be seen, the beauty that cannot be touched. That when you are truthful, that constitutes beauty. When you are honest, that constitutes beauty. When you are just, that constitutes beauty. He expects you to fix your eyes on Jesus and to have mercy and love mercy. Fix your eyes on Jesus. I know there are many people who depend on you and there are other people you depend on them. Whatever the case, your gaze must all be trained on Jesus. He is the one who cannot let you down. He expects you, gracious ladies, that you continuously and constantly talk to him. I'm sure the people you love, you talk with. You talk to them. And I'm sure sometimes you talk to them a million times. He expects you to be that and to do that. That you're able to, to talk to them, to talk to him all the time in prayer, in prayer. He expects you to glorify him. To glorify him, to love him, and you love and treat other women well. Gracious ladies, there is also beauty when you extend your love to other women. I refuse always to admit this fact that uh, women are enemies unto themselves. However truthful the statement is, but I say I refuse to take it as a gospel truth or as, um, as an adage that we can be using for our everyday uh, conversation. You can treat each other well. That's a fact. You can. You can treat each other well. I'm sure you can. Please be the best friend that another woman has ever had. The best. The best that anyone can ask of you. Let your, others, let your sisters know that uh, our sister is a lovely soul. Gracious ladies, please treat each other well always. And finally, he expects you to surrender to him. In all things, whatever you have, tactile wealth, anything about you, surrender everything to him. Total detachment. Thank you. May the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Friday.